my name is Melissa Schellenberger. I am a nurse practitioner at the Norton Neuroscience Institute, Hussing Multiple Sclerosis Center. The information I am sharing today comes from the National MS Society website, along with recommendations from MS neurologist, Dr. Alan Bowling. Let's talk a little about nutrition and MS. We know nutrition is important for overall health. We also know there are many benefits to a healthy diet and to achieving and maintaining a healthy body weight. For those living with MS, potential benefits include a decreased risk for MS-related disease activity and disability and better symptom management. We are talking about common symptoms like fatigue, depression, sleep disturbance, and bowel and bladder dysfunction. Good nutrition also helps prevent comorbidities that negatively affect MS, such as diabetes, heart disease, and arthritis. We know that diet affects the gut microbiome, which is made up of bacteria that live in the gut with important effects on the immune system. Dietary metabolites, which include vitamins, fatty acids or fats, and amino acids or proteins, have direct effects on the immune system and the brain. So what diet is best? The answer is, there is not a specific diet that has been scientifically proven to be beneficial in changing the course of MS. The recommendation is for a generally healthy diet. Here's the good news. Any positive changes you make toward more healthful habits will benefit your overall health and well-being and are therefore worthwhile. Here are some healthy recommendations. Low fat, high fiber, fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains over refined grains, lean meats or limited meats, reduce sugar intake, avoid processed foods, and drink mainly water. Vitamins. So there are over 200 dietary supplements that may adversely affect MS. On a positive note, we know there are benefits with vitamin D and vitamin B12 supplements. It is therefore important to have a discussion with your MS provider before starting any supplement. And finally, this is a video from the National MS Society website where patients and providers discuss diet and nutrition and MS. One of the things that I've changed since I've been diagnosed with MS is um, I don't eat as many sweets as I used to, definitely. I eat a lot of fresh veggies and fruits every day. Just try to eat a low-fat diet and just watch my sugar intake and just drink a lot of water. We've changed our diet in our house, so it's a little bit stronger in vegetables, and we cut down the carbos and cut down um, a lot of the meat. And uh, I, I no longer drink any kind of uh, Cokes or Pepsis or anything like that. It's usually sparkling water or water. The biggest thing we did was cut out sugar, also eating as much um, whole foods as possible. I'm not a vegetarian, but I eat a lot less like red meat than I used to um, and try and eat lean proteins. A lot of questions come about what is the right diet for multiple sclerosis. There's no specific diet for MS that has proven to um, provide any specific benefit, but obviously having a healthy diet is going to improve your health and it's necessary to keep you feeling well. Right now, researchers are very actively pursuing what types of diets can be helpful or potentially harmful for people with MS. And until then, when someone hears about a diet, I recommend that they talk it over with their healthcare provider to make sure that it's safe and something that would be useful to try. Often we default to saying, well, a heart-healthy diet. Um, so what we mean by that is a diet that's balanced, meaning it has adequate protein, carbohydrates, fats, um, it's not high in one of those areas, but it's balanced. Uh, we want a diet that's lower in concentrated sweets and sugars, high in fiber content, uh, adequate fluid intake, adequate fresh fruits and vegetables, one that avoids processed foods. We do not have firm data that a gluten-free diet will benefit people with MS unless they happen to truly be gluten allergic. We do not have evidence that dairy products are deleterious for people with MS unless they happen to have a true dairy, dairy allergy. 
People are starting to subject different dietary regimens to randomized controlled trials, just like you would study a drug or another treatment. So we're starting to get more information about diet. We know that obesity carrying around fat tissue may promote inflammation. If someone has mobility issues, being overweight can just compound that problem and make it more difficult to get up out of a chair, to walk a distance, uh, to move when there's compromised function or compromised lower extremity function, for instance. There have also been some studies looking at people who have MS and who are overweight and demonstrating that they have more inflammation and even more MRI activity. Weight is always going to be a challenge. Uh, it's very important to keep it controlled if you possibly can. I think you can eat healthy no matter what. I think making good choices, but sometimes enjoying the things that you love because French fries is my number one favorite food, but I know that I can't have them every day. Of course, being hydrated is very important, but um, I just think that overall it just gives me more energy. Having a diet with adequate fluid intake, meaning water, non-caffeinated beverages, is very important to overall health and MS symptoms. Having a diet that's high in fiber is important for bowel function. When someone eats an unhealthy diet, one that's very high in sugars, for instance, they may experience an increase in fatigue level. Eating foods that have low nutritional value a diet high in fast foods, or what we consider to be junk foods, may also increase someone's fatigue level. While the information that we have now in the world of MS is insufficient, there are probably some very good other reasons to consider limiting salt intake. And so probably by taking on a diet that has some limitation of salt that would be advocated by your heart doctor as well, you may well be doing a favor for your MS. For someone who's not getting adequate dietary sources of a particular, particular nutrient, they may, may need to have a supplement. I take um, a vitamin every day, and I also take vitamin D um, every day, and I have been doing that um, since around the time I was diagnosed with my MS. My vitamin D was low, and my doctor recommended that because I'm not out in the sun and don't get a lot of sun, that I take vitamin D every day. Vitamin D is uh, a vitamin that we now appreciate plays some role in the context of MS, at the very least in terms of the risk of developing MS, and research that is coming out more recently increasingly is pointing to vitamin D being relevant also for people who have established MS and may be relevant to the degree of MS activity they have. Vitamin D level uh, is measured by the blood, and many of us are low on the spectrum of the normal range. And so if individuals are low on that spectrum or lower than the normal level should be, there's recommendation to supplement with oral vitamin D. When Dan and I decided together that we needed to eat healthier, we started shopping better. We, we go to more farmers markets, which is just a fun experience anyway. And we have a great time picking out healthy choices. It, it helps us both. We have been attending nutrition classes every week and it's a lot of fun. We've learned what herbs and spices are healthy, what uh, fats to use, what not to use. Right now we feel healthier and we know we're doing the right thing for him. Changing my diet because of MS um, has really helped my family a lot. They enjoy eating healthy meals as well. And also um, I just try to tell my boys how important it is to eat healthy and to just start young and, you know, just to eat as healthy as possible, to live the best life that you can and to feel better. They enjoy the healthy meals and they always say, Mom, is this healthy? So they pay an attention and I like that. Thank you for listening to this presentation. Remember, nutrition is important and can positively impact the lifestyles of those living with MS. To learn more or make an appointment with a specialist, go to nortonneurosciencesinstitute.com.